Hello everyone, welcome you all to Sri Lanka Spotlight. Uh, this is a program hosted by Technobase. Just give you some idea who is Technobase, what is Technobase. Uh, Technobase established in 2005. It is recognized as International Resource Center for Industries and Technologies. Uh, main areas of industries are the polymer industries and process and utility technologies. You can always find more information about Technobase at technobase.org. Sri Lanka Spotlight is a part of the uh, Technobase virtual event uh, series. So we have so many other virtual events. You can always check our website virtualevents.technobase.org where you can find a variety of subjects with address as virtual events. Uh, feel free to check it out. So what is the object of Sri Lanka Spotlight? It's great. So we wanted to promote and disseminate the Sri Lankan expertise and innovations to the local as well as the global community. That is the main object of the Sri Lanka Spotlight. So we invite uh, experts and uh, specialists in various areas uh, as a guest speakers and talk about their uh, research or innovations coming out from their expertise. Main contents of the Sri Lanka Spotlight, each episode has a different things and uh, so basically the broader segment, you know, <coughs> we cover technical research presentations, uh, business and leadership conversations, innovations, patents, new products, good practices, success stories, startup stories, and also the journey of young entrepreneurs, and also we have panel discussions. So this is the area that we address in our uh, Sri Lanka Spotlight. Again, this is a part of the Sri Lanka Technobiz virtual event, so please do check our website, virtualevents.technobiz.org. And we aim to organize on every Saturday, but some we may skip some of the Saturdays, but it's, it's, a, it's a regular event uh, on the, uh, as a part of the Technobiz. If you miss this live session to join, you can always watch this session on YouTube or Technobiz channel uh, at Technobiz 2005, that is the handle and name, so feel free to check it out. Uh, if you, you can always contact me also if you want a link for a specific topic. Um, we, we are organizing a Polymer Sri Lanka uh, International Congress on Polymer Processing uh, during 20 and 21st February in Sri Lanka. We'll update you with the details. Uh, basically, it is a research and industry conference focusing on the polymer processing. So details will be announced very soon. This is me, Param Prasad Rao. You know, I think most of you will see receive my email. So if you, you welcome you to share any comments or remarks you have about our activities, I invite you all to join the journey of Technobase. We are specialized in very specific areas in the polymer industry. Our objective is education, one of the main thing, and also we offer a variety of business services. So check it out our website at technobase.org. If you are from Sri Lanka, would like to associate with us, you can always reach out to our colleague, Mrs. Yuganda Piyadasa, and contact information here. Feel free to reach out to her and uh, if you need any assistance or cooperation from Technobase. Okay, let's welcome to the today's episode of Sri Lanka Spotlight. Uh, today, we have a guest speaker, Professor Kamal Ranatunga. He's a professor at the University of Sri Jayawadanepura. Um, he will be talking about the plastics, environment and industrial sustainability this is a very important topic i think everybody knows about you know issues about environmental issues and particularly with plastics and uh, so it's good to have uh, professor kamal to as a guest speaker of the Sri Lanka spotlight and give a talk on the subject before i let him give a presentation i'd like to introduce about his profile briefly so that you all have understanding about who is Professor Kamal Danatunga, if you're not familiar with him. He is very famous, well experienced. So I want you to be patient and let me read his profile briefly. Uh, he has a PhD in marine biology from James Cook University in Australia. Uh, presently, he is holding a position as a professor in aquatic resources management and head of the Department of Geology at the University of uh, Sri Jayawadanepura. He's also serving as a director of environmental change sciences and technology innovation center as well as the center for marine science and technology at the university of sri jayawadanepura he conducts multidisciplinary research covering marine pollution from marine debris plastics in particular microplastics and biodegradation marine bio innovations ocean <clears throat> acidification blue carbon and marine 
environmental consultant in assessments, monitoring and managing the marine resources. He has more than 50 scientific publication in national and uh, international consortiums. He served as the member of committee of experts to formulate the national sustainable development vision of Sri Lanka 2030 with respect to ocean and ocean resources. He served in the national advisory level projects on marine environmental aspects, including the establishment of marine environmental baseline information network, petroleum resources development secretary to Sri Lanka, and also the assessment of actual impacts due to energy production in Sri Lanka, Public Utilities Commission, Sri Lanka, and a member of the Quality Assurance and Accreditation Council, Ocean University of Sri Lanka. He served as a consultant expert in several SCAs and EAAs and uh, IEs as a marine ecologist in uh, many development projects in the country, including the port, harbors, and marinas, offshore oil exploration, thermal and wind energy, fisheries and development, and environmental sustainability. But it's a long, but you can you can see he has extensive experience on key issues about the environmental, particularly with respect to the marine and as aquatic resources. So it's a pleasure to have Professor Kamal Ranatunga to be part of Sri Lanka Spotlight. I welcome him to give a talk on the plastics, environment, and industrial sustainability. First, he will make a presentation and we'll be having a discussion with him. I encourage all the audience if you have any specific questions or please do type those questions. I will put this question to Professor Kamal to address it after the presentation. Okay, so let's welcome Professor Kamal Ranatunga to give a presentation. Um, good day and I go on in Sri Lankan way. I'm so glad and proud to have a discussion in this very industrial forum. Well, I'm not very industrial person, uh, but of course, I'm someone who benefited from the industry, so I would really like to talk about this topic, the plastics environment and industrial sustainability. As a marine ecologist, so I would rather talk about the environmental sustainability, but uh, today I thought of giving a different approach where we think of the industrial sustainability as well. So let's move on. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, presentation. So this is how my presentation is lined up. Uh, very briefly about the plastic, what are the opportunities and risks, and, and a little bit on the mismanaged plastic waste, particularly the uh, microplastics, and um, a little bit of outlook about the plastic in global as well as local context, and our shared responsibility in sustaining the environment and industry, so what we can do. And also a little bit I'll talk about my research and the environment as well at the end. Right, so if you go back to the history, in our material use from the stone, stone age to now we have come to somewhere called the plastic era. And you will now go beyond that nanoparticles, but still the plastic is going to be one of the the, the test of one of the wonders of uh, the human invention. So, as you may already aware, perhaps you know, the, the, the early invention of the plastic, so the plastic like materials, was actually came with some conservation in mind, in particularly the, you know, the, the in manufacturing billiard balls, so they use the elephant task. And then when the, the resources ran out, they have to think of uh, other options that uh, they, they, the plastic-like material came for. And so that's something thinking of the conservation. And we, as a Sri Lankan, we know we're pretty much uh, had, used to be uh, having a very, um, traditional way of life, but with the plastic use, the easiness, the lightweight, the prices, and all many benefits that we get from the plastic, so we shifted our whole lifestyle. And our lifestyle totally revolutionized after these plastics. And as we all know, the, the most of the 
products, value chains, uh, telecoming for plastics, so it's sort of a building block, right? And then it's which drive in the industrial developments. But at the same time, with the excessive use, I and mean, then that has been causing some environmental and social cost as well. And mainly that the cost is mainly because of its longer lifetime and then also these uh, non biodegradability because it's built for persistence and which is causing some environmental, financial as well as some health problems. The issue here is because there was no uh, natural organism where they can recreate the plastic because it's synthetic material. Maybe in the evolution time scale there may be, but so far now. But it's not only the plastic, but the additives that in the plastic might have some problems. So we know that the, the lot of plastic materials, they have longer lifespan, which we already know about, right? It will last for sometimes generations, few generations. So now what we have to think of, is it the problem with the parts itself? Or are we not managing that properly? So that's something we have to think of. So let's we talk about these issues of plastics. What making these issues? So we as Sri Lankans, so our economy and then societies very much depend on the, the tourism, where they are marine and coastal ecosystems are the one of the prime target of tourism. And where the pristine marine and coastal ecosystems are very important. Me, as a marine ecologist or environmentalist, so I have waded to most of the, the ecosystem from surface to underwater. So I have witnessed where these plastic end up in some mangroves, some in the deep ocean, in coral reefs, in some mango plantation, and even very deep waters. And they're piled up in the coastal beaches in the large mounds. And it's not only the, the coast, but also in the in the, the and then and terrestrial and then posing a lot of uh, issues, degradation of the environment when we make the, uh, the elephants or other in that. And some issues like the express pearl had added another dimension to this issue. So we all know about this uh, potential impact of a uh, degraded fishing gear and other, other plastic material in the ocean and be left behind, what can cause this issue. Now, the most of the materials, we know that once they are break down into smaller pieces, so we can think of it better. But in this case, plastic, when they are break into smaller pieces, now they can even cause some even harm, especially the micro and, and all other level plastics. And there are a lot of now the cosmetics and our everyday life we are using even this, this uh, uh, microplastics deliberately made for um, different purposes. As you can see from this uh, image, the, the, some of the sources of uh, microplastic, if you look at right, some of the industries like uh, tire manufacturing, that's your synthetic textiles, and uh, city dust gets airborne plastic material, maybe nanoparticles, they are the, the major sources, but you know, personal care and, and even the pellet charges of mining. So now, if you talk about the, the potential impact, I'm, I know that this is something highly controversial. You know, we can debate a lot whether these are real or not, but we have very limited understanding about the actual impact of plastics and microplastics. But these are some of the speculation that they will pose, especially the issues that they will, they will pose from the ingestion or their toxicity, direct or indirect. And they can be very harmful when they, they, they came as leeches. And absorption will 
polars because they can like magnet, they absorb some chemicals. And for me as a marine ecologist, most important, like we can serve as a now, hitchhiking the invasive species, but they can take one place to another. But plus, we, only, we don't know even the sometimes virus or bacteria, if they are standing in very men, or perhaps they can uh, uh, post issues in the environment. So that's where we talk about the human health risk and as well as other environmental issues. Now we know that the, during the, the pandemic situation, I did a presentation about plastics in pandemic because it has double role because it saved a lot of life, provided a lot of protection for people at the same time. So excessive use caused a lot of uh, environmental damages as well. But it's pretty much the other habit. Right? So the polluter versus to prevent the role of the right? At the same time, this pandemic situation gave a lot of uh, opportunities for new innovations, for, for, for new products, especially the more biodegradable, more greener, more environmental friendly practices. Now, as I mentioned, the issue, whether it's a plastic itself or the, 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 the way we manage it. Now, this is the, the statistics from 2010, the global production of plastics, some at 170, now it's almost 400 by now, right? Even adding a lot more to the, the, the waste, something bigger than the manufacturer because there are a lot of amount of accumulating, right? So it's about 8 million metric tons we added to the ocean annually, right? It's just like a one garbage truck of plastic every minute. So imagine how it's going to. So you may have heard about that Sri Lanka was in the top page, top of the uh, list of in the world, 20 countries where discharged plastic waste into the very um, mismanaged waste. So this is so unfortunate situation. World top five among. And this is one of the highly cited uh, publications in, uh, in the internet. Right. <clears throat> so actually, I have worked on this uh, the, the plastic flow from the, the the land to the ocean. So we even recently published this. Um, well, now we know that it is some, not something true because it's something to do with the, the wrong data. But it doesn't mean that uh, Sri Lanka is doing good. We have a lot of issues, especially when we come to the waste, the management of waste. Right? Just out of the, the, the waste generation, just a little amount that we um, recycle. And much of the, the plastic waste ended up in the open dump yard. About 86% of the waste is in the open dump, and then eventually they find their way to the, the ocean. Much of that, right? And very little amount is going to the, the, the compost facilities and recycle only just 4% as per the available statistics. Very little use for the power generation and, and for industrial waste incineration, just action. Right. So that's where the National Action Plan for the Plastic Waste Management came in, where I talked about how to deal with these things. Now we all know that this uh, the waste management is a global challenge and Sri Lanka is not an exception, right? So it's a, a multiple solution. We need the multiple solutions because it's issues are coming from many. So this is even the STD, the Sustainable Development Goals. There are about uh, seven Sustainable Development Goals that keep talking about somehow related to plastics, from good health to clean water, like industrial, sorry, in, in the water uh, pollution, then sustainable cities and community, and then responsible consumption, climate action, because that produces 
greenhouse gas, protection of seas and ocean, repair ecosystem. So, and if you look at the, the uh, Sri Lankan situation with SDGs, I was uh, involved in this uh, presidential experts committee to formulate the, the Sri Lankan national strategy. So, as you can see, the marine debris came into the top of the, the pollution, pollutants in the marine environment. Right. So we haven't even think of that plastic as a, one of the major issues because it's we just categorized on the solid waste, not as the, the plastic, but just the solid waste. And much of this uh, solid waste actually coming from the land based, not from the ocean. Right? And then they all, at least 90% of this year, the, the issue is the uh, blocker, not trans bound or trans ocean. Right. So that's where there are a lot of recommendations of how to go ahead with these issues. Right. Now, we have to look at who is responsible for it, the, the, the issue. So we can identify three um, people, or the groups, the government, who has the biggest role in, the, in, in this addressing the issue. Of course, the companies who produce or use plastics and consumers. We are not alone, so, right? So we all have a, a responsibility in this, right? Now, what happened, we all tried to point our fingers to someone else, the other parties, but that's where we have to think of, we have our shared responsibility to do this if the plastic is going to be aging, right? So, <clears throat> So the, from the government side, the, the government imposes a lot of um, regulation for the plastic, especially to be avoid uh, single-use plastics in the quality. And even very recently, they put a uh, ban on seven uh, single-use plastic items last month. So sometimes government took a bold decision when they were when there was no any even the option, but they banned some of the, the materials, but where the industry was really struggling even now. Right. Now, <clears throat> as I mentioned, it goes to the industry only ban for the, the plastic issue. Right. But as we know, there's the, the much of these uh, plastics are ended up in the the landfills and the roadside, right? It's a matter of us or the governments or the local authorities. It's not doing the responsibility for fully disposing the, 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 the waste. So it is not only a problem with industry, but it is a problem with our society, our behavior, our, our consumption pattern. But help the industry go ahead uh, without doing anything. Because with a lot of environmental issues that we are understanding, and industry cannot go ahead as usual. And so that's why we have to think of. Because now the, even the consumers are thinking a little bit more greener. And the, the government's going to have more stringent local and international level um, rules and regulations. That's where the industry also has to adapt to these situations. Right? Even the last year, the, the WWF, they have formulated a new regulation to regulate the high-risk plastic product, like likewise. So that's where we have to think of and work on the collaborative approach from the government side, from the industry side, from the, the individual side. Technological improvement to the behavioral changes, to change in the life cycle of the, the products from the industry. So that's why we need a lot of uh, innovation, research and development, where we can uh, combine the research, development and industry. Right, so how the industry can involve in the issue. So if you are trying to a little bit go ahead or 
uh, with the social responsibility for the, the environment as well. So you can industry can involve in the, the preventing mismanage plastic input. Of course, the industry alone can't do it. They can support some projects who would involve in these things. And second thing is so monitoring quantities and distribution. Right? That's what we are doing as a scientists. Right? We are doing a lot of monitoring work. I will talk about this thing later. So where the industry can involve directly or indirectly, they can support. Right? And remove existing marine litter, the plastic that see the, the beach cleanup or different, right? So that's where the industry can support. They can find more technologies to this. And of course, the research and development to, to life cycle enhancement or the, the product improvement, where the industry can take place, where they can play a big role in all these parts. Now, we need to talk about the sustainability of the plastic where, and where we have to you know, um, think of what approach we have, the, you know, these things, the recycling. Now, the other things like biodegradable, degradable polymers, and then using the sustainable uh, alternatives, and then reducing the amount of plastics, and also designing also the product to be more recyclable. Right? That's why we have to think of. Now, can the recycling be an, an option? Right? Of course, it is option, but still there are a lot of uh, limitations as well, especially the they end up in a low value products in many cases. Unless you do a lot of uh, uh, improvement, right? And that can also go somewhere, like plastic issues as well. Right? And I look at these these prices, but this is, uh, I think, 99 uh, to 2019, um, you know, the, the price for the, even the recycled pet trade is going to be a bit higher. Now, with these market trends, can we go with the recycling as well? That's something to think of. Otherwise, are we going to go ahead with upcycling or do some value addition? So these are the options that the industry can think of. Now, with all that, there are now, um, the world is talking about something called biodegradable plastic, medium water, still called biodegradable plastic, or otherwise called environmental friendly plastics. Can this be a solution? Right? As you may know, this is very confusing term again, the term biodegradable. Sometimes we call the bioplastics or bio-based plastics that is that using them like foam, starch, right? Then the biodegradable plastics, just the traditional petroleum-based uh, plastic, but uh, they are more either photodegradable or, or also degradable, but they will degrade, right? Something like a, a polylactic acid. Can this be a solution? There we have the compostable plastics. Likewise, there are many options, very confusing from even for me, it's very confusing sometimes because how much they are going to um, add to be the, the issue. That's something you have to think of. Can this be a solution? A lot of people are talking about this uh, compostable or biodegradable plastics. Can this be a solution? I just searched the internet about the, you know, the, the market trend, you know, uh, particularly the biodegradable plastic market now it's growing in recent years. So that's something to think of, the industry can think of, because it's produced less energy or use less energy. So, right? And then uh, they produce less waste as well. But on the other hand, it's more costly as well. It will add more cost to the product. Now, then they have to think of this training the sustainability in the plastic industry, right? Where the traditional term used, the reuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and then redesign the last term. So that's 
the industry now thinking of, the industry now planning for. So that's something that you need to think of, right? To sustainable uh, production for the future. And that's where we talk about the circular economy, which I think you are very familiar with this concept of circular economy than myself. So that's something to think of the industry. So what else, what options we have? Beach cleanup or cleaning the, the, the environment to reduce the issue. So I call this as you open the tap and you're collecting the water, something like that. Can beach cleanup or environmental cleanup really do a good job to get rid of the environment, the waste, plant material? But beyond that, that's where we have to think of a little bit more further, right? We do a lot of beach cleanup as well, but beyond beach cleanup, we do something um, better. We do sort, sorting and we send whatever the recycled material, we send to the, the recycled facilities and we do awareness programs to reduce the, and not only that, at the same time, we enter this data into a database, a global database, where the everybody can see the our plastic footprint. So that will definitely do added advantage. Even we can do the underwater cleanup, all these, but of course all these are temporary, but not permanent solutions. But of course, we have to do this along with the data collection where we we have to and where does this come from and how to avoid or how to minimize these issues now if i move a little bit into the, my the research focus that's marine ecologists but more on the marine environmental assessment and marine pollution i have been dealing with the, the predicting for uh, assessing the sources of my, the, the plastics as well as the, the distribution and then what kind of materials are then where they come from. And, and this uh, long-term research has uh, ended up in a very good publication in, even in the marine pollution. The first uh, study on island wide survey that depict the, the level of plastic pollution usually, right? We do a lot of, uh, even uh, we do a surveillance in the rivers and uh, just to look at how the, the, the different flux from the rivers to the ocean. And we had a lot of collaboration. We even do the underwater surveys using site scan zones to you know, understand the, the, the level of, or the scale of the, the issue right? and how to deal with these things and how we can find solutions. We have a lot of collaboration with some other foreign um, institutions like a CSIR where we do large scale service. We are also a part of the a global network where we do um, model based study to understand how plastic flow from the land to the ocean. You can look at here, we have 300 sites around Sri Lanka, from the, the mountain, top mountain up to the beach. And even we are looking at the, the ocean, how they accumulate. And not only that, uh, we're also looking at the, the level of uh, microplastics from rivers to the coast, to beach, sediment, the ocean, and even to the fish. And I'm thinking of the, the, how it can, go to our food chain, right? And that's where we can uh, collaborate, perhaps connect with the industry, especially like the treatment plant. We will look at this treatment plant, even the, the, even the drinking water, the sand filter sometimes, whether it's the effective in, in terms of uh, filtering out the plastics, microplastic or in particular. Where we can collaborate with industries, uh, of course, we can share our knowledge, our understanding at least, 
of course, that we don't have the technology much to improve these things. That's where we can get the support from the industry. Right? And we do even a, a, a recent project, it's on the, the how this biodegradable label plastics, how do they actually, do they really degrade? And then we have keeping this for nearly one year now. And then we have different like a, different uh, biodegradable products used from, um, like the garbage bags, the lunch sheets and the salad plates, how they degrade, we're looking at that. And that's where again, we can do work with the industry where you know, if they are not really degrading, then what solutions are there? So what, how we can improve these things on the understanding, they, how long it's going to take degrade and then how they're going to degrade and what, what would be the end of product, end product. That's what we are looking at. And from that to the, the one of my very interesting uh, research is about the, the, the hitchhiking. The plastic can be a platform for the, the organisms to move from one place to another. So biofouling. So that is sort of a re very recent uh, uh, concept. We never thought about this is an EU, but now only, I mean, we realize that this can be a really big issue. As you can see here, these are all collected from floating plastic from the, the sea. So they can take organism from it, but you know, among them, there can be a very invasive species and sometimes even disease causing species. So that's where we have to think of. That is really long. And other options like the, using some traps on these things. Like, of course, we can have these traps, but that's why we need to put hand with the, the industry. I mean, how are we going to tackle with this? I and mean, of course we can sell it, but at the end, what are we going to do with this? Uh, this um, the, whatever the, in the trap, how are we going to deal with this? Thing? So that's something that we have to industry, their support, right? And, also, the other opportunities for both the industries as well as for the consumers, how we can go with right? now, plastic footprint, of course, with other alternatives. So that's something we have to think of. Both the individuals as well as the industries can look at the alternative solution. So, so that's my basically uh, the presentation. Right? So where I looked at the, the, the sustainability of particularly the environment as well as the industry. Right? So what are the possible possi potential sources of these plastics and, and how they could cause some issues in the environment. At the same time, what I need to highlight here is the plastic issue is not this. It's not only the industry issue, but this issue of our own, our shared responsibility, right? So I mean, plastic is the, the greatest inventions, of course. So matter of, you know, how we are dealing with this issue, that's something I want to highlight here. So with that, I really thank you um, for the organizers. Uh, for inviting me for this presentation. And then it's open for a discussion, of course, I would like to, uh, though I'm not an industrial person, but of course, uh, I would really like to share my thoughts and my generous thoughts on uh, the subject. Oh, thank you very much, Professor Kamal. Excellent presentation. Wow. Uh, Eye opening with a lot of data. I know whoever watched this one, they should realize that, oh, how, how big is the problem, right? So the, thank you very much enlightening us with the, with the things happening across the world and also in Sri Lanka itself, what is going on. Um, myself, you know, I'm a pro-plastics person. When the government bans the plastics, of course, because the industry, it affects the industry. It's a beautiful material. Um, are, are we really addressing the root cause of the problem? Are we addressing only 
talking about plastics. I mean, my way of looking at it is the littering is a problem. We don't address littering. We don't uh, uh, we don't uh, put any punishment or fine for the littering. Okay, we always talk about some countries, some um, uh, you know, some European or some you know, like uh, Singapore or in in Japan, Korea. We always talk about them. And do we have to have a policy on the littering, throwing away? Uh, and so, uh, can you comment on that before we go into how to manage the waste? You know, before it gets become the waste, and I think we need to talk about the littering policy. <laughs> Whether we should do, it. I think many of the countries that you're talking about, not just Sri Lanka, many other Asian countries have the same problem. We talk all the same thing for last 20, 30, same issues we've been talking about it. But um, you know, you are a marine ecologist, and you have seen, of course, you know, when you look at the pictures of the the fish, you know, issues of fish or fish nets that got struck into the north. Know, it's very tragic and see, but who is responsible for it? Is the plastic is responsible or people are responsible or industry is responsible? The one who makes it responsible, who is responsible? I think that's a, I mean, I'm, a, I'm getting, I'm, I'm not doing a non-government or NGO type of talking, but I think I sometimes I look at is that we are not addressing the root cause, educating the people and be responsible behavior and we are only you know you rightly mentioned about you know we always try to figure out somebody else problem not my problem you know you can, you can say you know in, you know, suppose there's some garbage in front of your home why this uh, municipality people not come to you know not pick in time you start blaming them rather than why we are creating so much you know not just on the plastic you know we're talking about food waste also there is another big big issue as well so can you comment on the you because you are you know part of the government policy making or you know drafting the you know in in, in, the, in terms of developing the policies for the government um where we stand on the littering policy do we have any littering policy or not or do you like to consider that a littering policy please okay, thanks uh of course i mean uh, yeah, I mean, we are not against plastic as well as the first instance, just like, I mean, uh, I mean I'm a technology person, so we, we have we pretty much depend on the plastic anyway. So, well, well, when come to the responsibility, of course, it's, it, you know, all our shoulders, it's not one party, it's not the industry, it's not the consumer, it's not the government, but we all have to have. And of course, it's basically it's our own issue, our return, our littering habit. Now we we are lazy people. I mean, in many cases, you know, just too lazy to you know even to throw your uh, the candy wrapper into a, a dustbin or even to put it in your uh, pocket. You have to just you just throw throw it away. And these very basic concerns and ended up, you know, we, we think that you know just one plastic wrap, we just one straw, just one plastic bottle. And then millions of people do the same thing. We think that it's just a one, one issue. Now, now we ended up both, we added this issue. You know? So it's partly the issue of our own habit. You know, even you know the municipal council, they come to one once a week to collect perhaps the, the your garbage, but it's still, you know, you on the following morning, you still throw uh, some plastic into the habit. But on the other hand, the government, you know, they are, I mean, if you are in a, a tourism destination, destination, but sometimes you don't have any place where you can put your uh, waste and you don't end up in an, you know, there is no other option other than you just throw it away. So that's why the, you only, it's not only your habit, but also, you know, there's no organized uh, mechanism in our countries in particular. And, and, that's where you ended up in this, right? You know, especially you know, sometimes uh, like some plastic, for example, I mean, in the, the harbors, a lot of uh, the fiber material. So there is no mechanism. I mean, up to now, even there is no mechanism where you can deal with these uh, fibers, whatever the, the broken boats and ships. They all just lying in the 
in the, the riverside or in the, in the beaches and then you can't do anything with this there is no mechanism so and and that's where even the industry have i think some role where we can we can think of you know for me other than you know burning there i don't see any solution for so far you know. so yes mr Perron, so i think it's no, it's not one party, but it's uh, we all have a role. And and you talk about the government policy, of course. Um, you know, as you are very correctly said that we are not the you are pointing to the root cause, right? I mean, it is not for the plastic issue, but to you know any, any issue, we are not really dealing to the root. <clears throat> of course, the government should have a really good stringent policy, but not only that. The implementation is a very important thing. That part is really making anywhere. And then, of course, some countries they do, but since we don't implement it, nobody's business at the end. So that's where we ended up in huge yeah. issue. Yeah, this is a um... Uh, it's many many stakeholders to be you know look after each other and then you know solve this issue i think i'd like to comment one issue that we should look at it is the environmental education from the primary schools okay so, you know i say i'm actually in uh, you know in master's in environmental engineering but i always think that you know in particularly in asian some of the many of the asian countries um, we talk about mathematics, science, you know, getting some kind of uh, good grades, but basic hygiene, basic environmental consciousness since at early age. Um, I think that is a possibility. The government should revise the curriculum of the students, particularly the primary students, you know, and if you, if you tell the younger age, right things, I think that of course, that is universal you know, practice anyway. If you tell them at younger age, they do change, and not everybody, at least many of them. Okay, if you ask you and me to change, I know we, we are lazy. Oh, we can talk big words, but um, when it comes to the practice, um, you know, sometimes we have an excuses. But uh, that you know, that is what we need to look at in a, countries like with Japan or you know some of the developed countries. They emphasize on the primary school education on the habits of the hygiene, hygienic issues, and also the but the environment, even health issues also, because environmental issues cause health problems. As simple as that, right? You know. And so, uh, do you have the you know Sri Lankan government or you know in your you know, policy making looking at the um, environmental education and, and at early you know a primary education level itself? What is going on there in that area? You really took the right uh, uh, place. Actually, this is something in my mind as well, and I have uh, suggested in many forums of uh, the you know the government, you know, even you know in that SDG uh, goals, even the ocean literacy, something some really uh, is a good at and it should the pipe will learn how it is. It, it is in the the books, that's the thing, but you know, you know the, the government or the, the, the authorities practice, otherwise uh, they are well written in the books, uh, what to go ahead with this. Uh, you see then now, even uh, uh, now it's the, we do sometimes beach clean up, rather we do, you know, uh, citizen science program where the public get involved in the, in the, uh, the clean up and at the same time we do the sorting and then we do the enter entering data. You know, we are sometimes only we get a couple of people get influence from the arts and they join with us, but you know, the many people just look at us and they just pass by and then they don't even think of joining what they are doing and should we join with this kind of a thing? They sometimes even they don't think of that because they don't have that culture, it's, it's, it has to be incarnated in, incarnated in their mindset. So that's where the primary, this has to become from the primary education. If we do that, I mean, definitely we can do something um, better. Yeah, I think that is one of the important solutions that really need to, any every government across any country, you know, to emphasize on it, 
educate younger children and they make a change because that is their future we actually we are spoiling their future and uh, um, we should tell them so that they can go back to their parents uh, you know don't do this you know my teacher told me you know, don't do this and i think that is more impactful than the we giving lectures on, on the forums and uh, talk great things you know but uh, no practice no implementation so yeah well you know you are a marine guy you know, one of the things is the tourism operators, you know, from Sri Lanka, the, of course, the beach, you know, that's the tourism is a big in industry for Sri Lanka. Um, how, how much you've seen the change, you know, from the tourism operators in terms of looking at the environmental issues? When, you know, when, it, when you show the pictures like this and um, you know, what you've met, showed on the, on the screens, the amount of waste, the amount of uh, impact that is creating plastic waste or any other waste, um, are there tourism operators are supportive of this kind of um, awareness and they want to be part of it or what's like? Well, actually, the, the, of course, because the, you know, tourist tour, tour operators or the, the, they are, I mean, pretty much rely on this, the, the beautiful beaches is the, I mean, I, we call the three S tourism, the sun, you see, and the, uh, like the three S tourism. So, and then, of course, anywhere we organize an event, and definitely the tourism people, they definitely help the best way they can. So, I mean, they are partly, I mean, they are very much benefited by, I mean, not, not more than us, it's very much they benefited. And then anywhere if you have, you know, any uh, voluntary activities, they definitely support. And then that's something uh, we have to really appreciate their own. But now the the issue is you know that that only limited the the, the tourist hotspot only that's the, the issue you know the other areas just left behind and then no one there to look after and that's where the most of the photographs that we took like in the river mouth and all these you know they ended up in a, a huge pile of plastic so i mean when can't do anything, you know, if they that huge uh, amount of plastic. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, the when it comes to tourism in industry, of course, we know as a tourism operators, you know, they it's a beneficial, uh, beautiful beaches, beautiful, you know, environment, but we cannot control the quality of the tourists. That is another problem. You know, everybody have a different attitude, different behaviors, you know. It's not my how, my home, okay. Um, I, I, the tourism policy is, of course, not just on educating the, um, the tourism operators, okay, how to collect their waste and then whether it's a, they're taken by boat or ship or something. But at the same time, you know, make sure that the, the tourists, the visitors, foreign visitors, and they should behave they should be responsible for their own waste creation i think that is also one challenge is it right yeah that is very true so well i can see i mean two parts in this you know because you know um i mean sri lanka used to get a lot of uh, uh, you know european tourists uh, for a long period of time you know i mean i'm not a pro european or something but uh, you know they are Pretty much, they more concerned about the environment, and not only that. I have seen they are fighting with the local people. Uh, you know, they are asking not to dump plastic. You know, when they see that someone throwing plastic to the sea, they fight with the local people. So they are going against. So it is. So I have seen a couple of times like this kind of situation. But on the other hand, the now the the government, so some uh, you no, know, they are looking at the. The tourism in numbers, not the the, the quality the quality or the, the the who is coming to be as a tour. No, a lot of tour. I mean, we, we, we just count on the numbers and then ended up in the huge uh, um, uh, tourism. Uh, but you know, they are just spending little money and then they are eating from the roadside and then they are spend just a little bit of money. But they are causing. I'm always I keep telling this one. In many annoying you know, lectures and on forums, I can don't invite a lot of tourists. We don't need too many numbers. You no, know? we need a more responsible tourism. 
So a country like we are island nation, you know, we pretty much uh, rely on the, our natural capital, right? So so natural capital has a limit. So it, it has a, a carrying capacity, you know, that it can it cannot support large numbers. So that's where we need to invite more, you know, more <clears throat> responsible towards it's not the number. So that you know we have sort of lost that control and when you lost that control and then of course the that's the, the you know the starting of the environmental degradation that's what we so that's yeah thanks so let's get into a little bit on the microplastics that is a scary part you know you show the picture of the toothpaste as well and all the cosmetics okay all the coatings you know um uh is there any specific policy that uh, Sri Lankan government is focusing on the uh, how to deal with the microplastics because it's very much into the industry, you know, whether you're the toothpaste maker or the coatings or um, all all the I mean every every segment of the industry use somewhere or not some kind of plastics in there, okay. Um, so if you if you show the pictures like ooh okay microbes you know there's there is really very um, tiny size of plastics that are going in, inside our body. And uh, when you look at that, uh, showing that digestive system, oh man, oui, is, this, is it true? Uh, is it going to be, uh, we have to be concerned or not? You know? um, what kind of um, uh, things happening in Sri Lanka with the reference to the microplastics? I think this is the same story every country now. Everybody is talking, even UNEP, uh, a lot of projects are going on you know, in terms of the uh, microplastics. Um, so. What is what's happening in Sri Lanka right now on microplastics? Are they concerned? Yeah, um, you know that is the microplastic, uh, partly unknown story and then partly a scary story as well. So, but uh, the government side, uh, you know, like in many countries, so the putting a control on the microplastic is, it's, it's, I mean, we are not up to that level so far. That's the thing, but. You know this uh, microbeads, in particular, in the in the cosmetic material, it's, it's it's more than you know something attractive rather than you know it's not even proven whether they can be used as a scrub or not. It's not proven even, but uh, you know you just put uh, some colored beads into this uh, into your uh, product, and then you attract more uh, consumers, and rather than you know actually, I. But. Um, these are the things actually, I mean, the, the other products, you know, we, we, we cannot avoid, but these kind of amount of plastic, we, we really can, even, you know, detergents now, they are coming with the, uh, the microbeads and then they are saying that they are whitening or making it to get your whiter, but, uh, uh, but it has not been proven. And so that's something we have to think of. Uh, uh, but yes, the answer to your question is the, uh, I mean, putting a control in microplastics is nearly something impossible, but it's a, a matter of, you know, the, the plastic in general, dealing with the plastic, not the microplastic, it's very hard to deal with the microplastic. Now, on the other hand, the, like, uh, you know, they are coming to our body or not, uh, what kind of, problems they are going to cause for is really the unknown part, you know, we can say, you know, now people talking that like you are eating a, like a credit card type plastic, like, right? you know, everybody's eating, but uh, we have looked at the, you know, fish and, and, and marine organisms, and they all have my plastic uh, in their gut, which I mean, they will, you know, they might not get into the, uh, the digestive, only the inside the digestive tract, and they will, they will go out mostly. And then, but the, the nano microplastic, that's the, something to be think of, right? Uh, which is, uh, I mean, we, are, we don't have the facilities to you know, look at the nano levels at, at the moment. So you only look at the microplastic. Of course, uh, they are in almost every fish we that can check they will have the microplastic in their gut, but um, uh, rarely we see them in the tissues, but of course some they do, some they get into the tissues, uh, but uh, 
it's not in the large numbers. I mean, even for the human, uh, uh, you can say that if you eat a fish, the whole fish with the, the microplastic or so, of course, we will ingest them. Uh, but again, whether they are going to get into the, uh, uh, the body tissues or not is a, a second thing something to think of and, and not at the micro level, but maybe definitely at micro level, so the nano level, definitely they might get. Now again, the how toxic is plastic or microplastic with the second concern, you know, we know that the virgin plastics usually are not very that toxic, of course, there may be some toxic part, but they're not always highly toxic, but the, still the additives that, you know, as you know, the plastic person, you know, the, the additives, we don't know what kind of additives. So, each particle, one particle to particle is maybe different because they have different have different um, adsorption capability. So that is the unknown part. And then we have the scientists also trying to understand the, the, the bigger picture of the microplastic. But for the moment, what we know is there is some tendency that the microplastic can be ingested and they can be both inside our tissues as well, but they are really take some time to understand, to get the real picture, but that's why my understand. Yeah, I think it's, a, as you rightly said, still a lot to work on it in terms of getting right information on, you know, its impact, um, even the measurement also, that is also another important, you know, issues is that, you know, how to measure it in microplastics, you know, how much it is there. Uh, how much how how it's how much toxic you know toxicity is there in you know for the human beings and so but it is scary it's unknown but at the same time scary yeah when you see it you know you're showing the toothpaste and showing the cosmetics oh my goodness you know now people live with you know you know in the past we used to use a, you know some tree and we use a clean or a brush our teeth right and now we use every all the fancy colors and the taste so when the, we are living in a different world and we are actually uh, depend so much on the um, uh, uh, fanciness of the product you know, in, you know, that yes. makes it like we don't we don't we don't know what is in there why it is that color but we're attracted by that fanciness and um, uh, that's also causing is <laughs> a problem yeah i mean even they don't know even if, because the, the label says it's a micro beads but i mean no one will bother to think of what microbeads mean. So so then that's where you know you don't end up in and buying something that you really unnecessary. So, yeah. Uh, and also we have a habit of only whenever you have a, when you buy the product, we only look at one thing, price, amount in there, and that's it. Okay. Smells good or uh, tastes good. That's it. You don't look at uh, what is the what is the composition there, <laughs> you know, you, they, because they're very tiny anyway. So they will put information as per the record as per certification, but we never bothered about that, uh, you know, the composition of it. And um, so sometimes we need to think about self-blaming ourselves, you know, for all the, <laughs> the yeah. things. Yeah. And also the TV commercials, right? If they, if they, if they, oh, if yes. the big public figures is using it, so that's it that they need. <laughs> yes, yeah, and we attract with all the celebrities, you know, whether they use it or not, we get you know, attracted to that as, as well, yeah. And also, they should be more responsible, which one to be promoted, which not to be promoted, you know. So, I think that these things to be addressed in multifaceted, it's not just one way, but education makes a difference. Education That's makes true. a difference. At the, at the younger age, it makes much more difference. That's my, my way of looking at, you know, this uh, thing. Yeah. Okay, let's look at your plastic recycling business as my last point of discussion. You know, of course, we understand uh, uh, waste. Waste is, you can't stop the waste. Waste will be created no matter what. We know we're never able to utilize 100% resources. We have to waste it. And uh, whether it's a plastic or any other, other material, um, how is the plastic recycling business uh, or the government is supporting, you know, or are there any, any incentives for the plastic recycling business? Because you need a, you see, the, the problem is the collection, right? You know, collection is a problem. Okay, then segregation and the problem. Okay, first the collection. Okay, people scavengers, you know, people, as you know, it's easy ones that they get. People collect these uh, PET bottles are easy ones, you know. But once the once the plastic is mixed with the food, some water, 
you know it goes to the landfill or it goes to the you know uh, you know maybe municipal municipal collection system um so i want to understand whether the government is uh, you know whether they're supportive in sri lanka in terms of the plastic recycling business so that if you have more entrepreneurs in the plastic recycling business so they collect better right they know the value of it you know so uh, how, how is this, how is the situation in sri lanka with reference to the plastic recycling uh, i would call it pathetic so okay. well uh, you know, in the the recycling of course the one of the the one of the solutions that we can uh, think of uh, when you are trying to deal with the, the waste because you know whatever that become waste so there is no other way so we have to do either collect but what we do is we collect and put it in the the, the one dump yard and then eventually they end up in the ocean again so but uh, so that's where we need uh, to think of uh, some sort of a circular economy and, and but you know um to my experience you know we we, we sometimes that even the last beach cleaner for the the world ocean day we, we collected this uh, uh the beach and then we sorted them and then you know even to uh, get hold into someone who can and you know collect our uh whatever the sorted material was really we had to struggle <laughs> and uh, so eventually uh, we had to take it back to the university the whole lot in our bus and then then we kept it for a couple of days and then then only we could uh, uh, hand over to one of the uh, person from the recycle so, so that's the level of uh, the recycling of course the, the i mean there is an issue because you know the, as you said uh, correctly said uh, the our waste segregation and all these are not uh, you know up to the standard so you know so sorting and it's, it's really difficult task and and, and particularly in these states the transportation costs are really high and with that you know the recycling is really not something you now uh, very practical as this of course i mean there are some uh, people who do this recycle job but uh, the collecting sorting and and the cleaning part is i think is uh, the, the costly part uh, to my understand i'm not really industrial person but you know even that's where i know ended up in some class there prefer sending me to somewhere like incinerators but even in these incinerators industrial incinerators they are you know not around colombo or somewhere but still, you know so so nothing you can't do anything at the end even you collected something so you have to give it back to the the, the municipal council to do go the routing uh, the open dump yard uh, dumping that's what ended up in you know even uh, the you know we do lot large scale beach clean up for the ocean day i mean not us but sometimes even the government take and so at the end so it also ended up in the the municipal waste so it's just not the waste and then i don't think it's do anything i mean it's not a permanent solution so i think uh, that's why even our when we were in the sustainable development goal so where we suggested the the whoever the government i mean it's a not non political topic suggested to to you know have a a, a, a a fund where you can you know i mean everybody no matter you are a producer or a consumer you put a tag on your plastic yeah you was the, the your contribution to the, the managing this bottle or what was the plastics this much and then if you put that i mean and that will give some sustainable solution to the issue i mean the biggest issue is the the collecting and sorting which cost money so if you could have done that one to add that i mean it's not affecting the, even the industry because you know it, at the end i mean for my but at the end as consumer is paying but uh, you know at least the part we can pay by the industry or who the polluter as well so if you could have i mean initiate this kind of thing and it will be already a sustainable
otherwise i don't think even the um the recycle business is something we, uh, i don't think it's that um, uh, lucrative business uh, in this kind of a, a global you know economy transportation and all these things labor and you know, it's not yeah you know the the, the in plastic recycling technologies nowadays you have complete solution you know uh, producing it in various products valuable products you know technology is available and the government should give some kind of incentives to you know for the entrepreneurs to utilize these technologies it's uh, plastics can be totally recyclable with you know you, you have any, even a plastics waste to the energy levels a lot lot options are there a lot of research has been done a lot a lot has been implemented in many parts of the world um, but you need uh, some, you know, business people, particularly industries or, you know, entrepreneurs to come forward and invest in this one because waste is there's a resource anyway. Okay? So uh, that is that is the, you know, the government should and give some you know, motivational incentives or, you know, so that they, yeah, all these problems can be, you know, can be eliminated. So. Uh, Professor Kamal, it's nice to talking to you. I'm really enjoyed this conversation. I, I'm sorry that I also put my head into the conversation, <laughs> you know, talking about that this is a problem of everyone, not just uh, you and me or you know every person living in the world. Uh, uh, plastics waste, environmental conservation uh, is a thing that we need to be respond, you know, look after. Uh, you know, it's a, as you said, is a shared responsibility of each in every individual you know no matter whether you're industry or government or you know in, in a consumer or people normal people you know so yeah any final message to the audience well anyway, uh, thank you i mean uh, but uh, i i also really enjoyed uh, you know uh, talking to i mean this kind of a forum especially with you uh, because uh, pretty much we are all looking at the other part of the issue more on the environment um, so the message here as i mentioned with i mean there's no use of point pointing to someone right whether it's doing the government or whether it's the industry or the individual responsibility i mean it is a shared responsibility i mean it is our problem it's not their problem so I mean, we all have to take part, right? As you very correctly said, it's the norm. It's not just the plastic is the issue, it's the way we can be, right? It's our attitude is the issue, right? If you, our attitude is good, I mean, uh, not really a problem, that's something. And the, much of the, the problem actually we, can, we could solve with just changing our attitude a little bit. And, and that's my message. Yes. Thank you very much, Professor Kamal. It's a, a pleasure to have you and you know in this uh, Sri Lanka Spotlight program and talking about the plastics, environment, and industrial uh, sustainability. And I think your message conclusion is uh, behave responsibly. That's what it is. I think if you want to look after your, you know, our children, your children, or in anybody's children in the future, their gen, their gen, next generation, we got to be uh, behave responsibly. Uh, towards environment, what kind of whether it's a plastics or non-plastics, every waste is a you know uh, is a problem. So, uh, with that note, I really thank you. Uh, you know, you gave us a sort, lot of enlightening statements and you know data that you need to look at it. Hey, yeah, this is a serious problem. Whether it is you're from the industry or from the government or individual yourself, that um, you should really think um, uh, before you're doing any you know wastage. I think that is a uh, uh, that is the thing that we, we learned today. I appreciate the time today, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gary. Okay, guys, uh, that's a session with the Professor Kamal Ranatunga. He's a professor at the University of uh, Jayawardene Purra. Uh, he talked about the plastics, environment, and industrial sustainability. I'm really hoping that this session is interesting, useful to you, and uh, I see you in the next episode of the. Uh, Sri Lanka spotlight and meeting another expert from Sri Lanka and learn from their their experiences as well. Thank you all for joining this session today. So, thank you.